Hey, welcome back to the Instagram stories. Sorry I've been absent for a week, I've been really sick. But today I went out to shoot um, some practice for a project I'm starting. And I went out with a Chamonix. I didn't do any video of that, but I will post on the YouTube um, pictures of what I did today. And I basically put a white backdrop and uh, brought my model in front, kind of like Avedon did, to try to take um, some pictures of some people I want to do and isolate them from where they are. So I shot some Fomapan 400, exposed it at 250, and I'm gonna develop it on my Jobo right now, which is warming up. I've already uh, loaded three tanks. This is a 3006 tank, which takes six uh, four by five sheets. I've done another 3006 tank, also takes um, six sheets. I have done uh, my one uh, 3010 tank, which will take 10 sheets of 4x5, as it says there. And um, I'm going to load these tanks from Jobo, which these are a bit more of a pain to load, as you might know. And they take um, 6 sheets, 3 on each side, so 3 on one side and 3 on the other. But you can do 2 of them in one of these tanks and do basically tw um, 12 yeah 12 it does 6 no uh, yeah 6 and 6 12 12 sheets on these two so yeah these go in here I'll load them up and I'll develop them and as soon as they're ready I will show you the results I will be developing on HC um, Kodak's HC 110 on B and that's going to be one, two, three, four uh, loads on my Jobo. So this is the chemistry I'm going to use. As I told you, Kodak HC um, 110 for developing. And as I'm using a Jobo, I mix basically water in the first um, basically liquid that goes in contact. So I'll wash with water for five minutes at um, 20 degrees, which is the temperature I develop at. Then I'll do... HC 110, then I will stop with Ilford Ilfo stop at uh, 119, and then I'll fix with ethanol super fix at 14. So, yeah, basically, I always have a few more liters ready of H20 um, and HC 110, which is what I uh, use on one go. And I keep it to so it warms up in the um, Jobo machine so there's no trouble with that. So it's immediate. Once one tank finishes, I put the next tank and I keep on going. So yeah, this is basically my setup for developing. This is what I use um, for everything I develop, basically, which is black and white. It's uh, 131, which is 31 milliliters or centiliters um, of HC. And um, the rest is just water. There you go, 32. I put the cap on that. And I mix everything at the beginning um, so there's no confusion. Sorry, that's not the measuring scale. I put a bit of water, pour my HC 110 in there. And is it like a syrup? It won't come out. As you can see, it's most of it's still in there. So I wash it off with water. So I put a little bit of water, let it fall, a bit of water, let it fall, a bit of water. Give it a bit of a stir. Go in there. I'm not the cleanest in the darkroom. I'm sorry if someone thinks this is the worst way to develop your film. Probably should be using gloves too. But that's how I do it. So yeah, now I just fill it up to one liter. And then once that's full, I get my little stir, and I stir as it's um, syrup, it really tends to stay at the bottom. So that's what I do for HC 110. Then this is a clean bottle, even though it doesn't look clean, it's clean. I pour it in here, and I keep it as a second liter for my HC 110. So now this is ready for when I finish my first developing. Now I'll grab and put the top on that. 
we have number one H2O, number two developer, number three stop, number four fix. So I'm going to fill up the water and I just pour water. This will be going into the film at 20 degrees which is the temperature I process at. It's a little cold so it's going to warm up. That's what the Jobo does best. Then we're going to get the HC110 that's mixed here and pour it in. Close that. Now I grab the bottle of the second ball of HC and I put it in the back here. And that is in a bath of water. So it will keep the temperature. And when these are done, I can refill each one. It has H2O, HC110 when I do more, HC110. And these are just spares just in case I need them. Um, now to program the machine, you go over here. So what I do, I go to the program and you press these two. You change the um, program, so you go down. Temperature 20 degrees. Pre-warm, which is basically the tank turning without any um, chemistry inside, five minutes. Uh, first chemical, which is water, as you saw, five minutes. Second chemical, which is actually the developer, that's seven minutes for Foma Pan 400 at um, HC 110 uh, B dilution. So that's fine. Then it's stop bath, fix, and wash. So it's all ready. So that would be ready. Now if I want to check my temperature, I press F1. The water is at 20.6 degrees. Chemistry is at 15.8. So it has to warm up all the way to 20 and it will start on its own. Then the tank goes here. As you can see, there's the little hook for the tank. So I would grab my Jobo 3010. Just in case, when I do all of this, I keep notes with a little tape. So that says Fomapan 400 exposed to 250 even though I'm developing it normal. So you just hook this on and um, press the button and it would start on its own. So when it finishes, I'll show you guys how I pull the film out. Now we got the film in the tank. You use a special blower to pump a uh, positive pressure in the tank which is a beach pump. Once we do that, take the lid off. We grab our PhotoFlow Kodak. This lasts like years and years. We pour a little bit, a few drops. I pour them in the middle. Once we have that poured, we grab the hose and we put water in. Um, I try to do one hole at a time. As you can see, or not see, let me show you. You see the holes on the tank? When you see that um, so, um, foam, that means it has the soap. It just photo flows just like a soap. But this is the last wash. You don't wash it after this. So once this is done, it goes straight to hang. You don't want to put more water without photo flow. It has like an antibacteria, so bacteria won't eat your film. Because remember, film is made out of gelatin, and gelatin is uh, something you can eat, and uh, microorganisms and stuff can eat it. So keep your film in a cool, um, dark place, and you shouldn't be having any trouble. And properly washed. So once that's there, I clear off the foam just a little bit with the own water. And you have to let it sit for a minute. So now it's been a few minutes. I usually wash my gloves with a bit of water just before. So if there's any dust or any trace of any other chemical it'll be clean. Once I touch this it's okay because I'll have photo flow all over my gloves. So yeah, 
I put a little white sheet of paper so maybe you guys can see the negatives from today. So this is um, my wife. It's a white background. So you guys might have to invert your screens. On the YouTube video I'll probably do it myself. So yeah, that's how it came out. This is a Foma Pan 400. Uh, pushed, no, actually exposed at 250. Developed normal. And I'm looking for that Avidon kind of style. I know it might not be original, but it's what I want to try with this new project. Another one of my wife. I usually put a little bit of water on top to take the bubbles away. You guys can see that there on the Instagram Live or YouTube. I use these little hooks, which are from Jovo, which are really nice. But I've lost a few of them, so I'm pretty upset. Hook a little bit on the corner, and I hang them to dry. Got another one here. This is my youngest daughter, which is hard to get, like, not moving. Let's see. There you got it with a white background. There it is with a white background for the YouTube video. Another little hook. And to hang. Then we have another sheet here. This all today. This was my daughter who wanted to take a picture but didn't wait for me to pull out the dark side. As you can see, we exposed half the shot. That's what happens when you got kids and you let them take pictures. Accidents happen, but still, you know, you gotta let them try. So I still hang and dry my mistakes as I think they're worth keeping. Some people just dump them. I kinda enjoy having reminders of what happened. So let's see what else came out. Oh, this is a uh, family picture. During this Christmas, family will be waiting for this. You guys can see it on the YouTube there. I'll invert this so you guys can see that. This was done with a 120 on the Chamonix. A little wide, but it was a big group. And I needed that depth of field from a 120. So yeah. Another little hook. Once I run out of hooks, I use normal clothing pegs and I ran out of hooks so another one of the group shot took two neighbor took the pictures so we could all be in there more of today I made a mistake while shooting and didn't stop down my lens as you can see this is totally white but the good thing about film is maybe I'll be able to retain some you know detail when I do all uh, contact prints or print them. But this was supposed to be f22 and I left it at f5.6 so you can see that's way overexposed. And then I've got a real close up on my wife as you can see. That's a 240. Developing specs as someone's asking I've said it before but just in case is um, Kodak HC 110 Delusion B, which is 131, Foma Pan 400, um, metered at 250 ISO, developed at 400, normal, so 7 minutes. Stop bath is Ilford and fixer is Tetanel. And then this is it. I just like, gave an oh, oh, extra stop because it was real, like I pushed the bellows real far. And this one is the last one of these. I did 10 sheets, I got 6 more going right now. So yeah, this was a, basically a test uh, to see how this could work and how it will look. Next patch is finished. So yeah, great shot. Totally missed that one. I hope it wasn't filmed that I hadn't exposed. There's a shot there. This is um, in the gate deal a few weeks back. It's um, high ally court. If you guys don't know what Hayalai is, it's J-A 
I L A I. No. J A I A L A I. It's a Basque sport. It came to Miami, also Cuba. It's pretty interesting. And it's a traditional sport here. So that's what I shot that day. This is some um, fountain in Madrid. Not very interesting. I think I actually shot this handheld. I'll see if I can find footage of that. But this was handheld. With my Chamonix. Nothing special like a travel white or anything like that. That is an... Um, that's kind of an architectural shot. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's using the 72 millimeters um, Super Angle on from Schneider. And um, using the normal bellows, and it wasn't easy, and it was getting dark, but the shot came out fine. This is in Legatio with my family. They were getting nuts. That's, um, I don't know how you call it, a tree that gives you nuts. But those are um, my, my wife and aunt and my kids picking up nuts on the floor. They were actually really good. Small, but good. I can put this on the top here and the last shot for today is also in Madrid that's a hallway with some arch arch arches arcs it's pretty cool it's in Aran no Aranda oh I can't remember I'll try to remember and post it but yeah that's it for today for this round Another six came out. Let's hang them out. See what came out of here. Looks like a blank overexposed sheet. It's nothing but white. This is a window in Legatio. I remember shooting this. Then we have a picture of my daughter and my aunt playing some table game. I included a few recordings of um, some negatives. This is a group shot that we took in Madrid. I, I videoed the negatives that are dry and I unhung so you guys can see. You've got my wife from today, my daughters, and the family group shots that I did during Christmas. Hey, the last 12 sheets uh, just finished. They're in the photo flow, which is the final step. And now I'm just going to pull them out and hang them. As I said, these are the travel wide pictures that were all pushed to 1600. So, handheld photography, large format. Not all come out good. It's actually rare something comes out that's decent, but it was really fun while I did it. I want to keep on using this camera like that, but it's it's not easy to shoot that much film and develop it. And go behind the people and take shots of them. It's pretty cool. Travel Wide is a fun camera. A lot of people have been asking about it. I wish I could say they're going to make it again. But I feel like the um, people that made it got a little burned out with the whole process. And that means they've been one of a kind. So you might as well find a second hand one or just um, buy a different camera. But yeah, lots of shots. Lots of mistakes. That's a mistake kind of looking shot. I don't know. Um, previously I said there was a shot that was... Um, Blank. Well, actually overexposed. I was wrong. It was a detail of a rock. So, so far only one out of 34 has come out as a total mistake and um, the rest are usable. That's next to my house, next to the water, that's looking out to the ocean. This is actually, um, I don't know, like a signal light for boats when it's raining so they won't crash. That's 3 out of 12. 
Now let's see this way. That is in San Sebastián, Donosti. I remember that day. It's pretty cool when you develop film and you start remembering what shots you had taken that maybe you weren't so aware of. That's something that's fun. You can be immediate or you can take forever. I like being immediate sometimes, but forever is sometimes fun. That's a shot of a lady in Bilbao with these um, street, um, basically trees which are metallic. It's pretty fun. I have a behind the scenes of that. Let's see if I find it. I will make some videos of my travel wide adventures because I videoed everything I did. But that's going to take time. And that's something I don't have. So, uh, number six is some old lady in a blanket. Kind of street photography 4x5, that's what I did with the travel wide. Took shots of everything I could. And it was fun as long as, well actually it was too much fun. That's why I had to stop because I was too, um, I made too many shots, basically. These are the trees I was talking about. Look, you can see them there against the sky. They're super funky metallic trees. In Bilbao, in this place called Euskal, Euskal Luna, which is like a congress concert. Look at those crazy shades and trees and stuff. This was mid well, midday. The light was strong and the shades were pretty strong on a sunny day, which is not very common. I was shooting everything 1600, so it was pretty fun because it let me stop down the lens a lot. It's a bicycle guy. Some 4x5 um, sport photography here on a funky bridge with some fun shadows. Bicycle's a little blurred, but that adds to the movement. These are some kids and a lady playing on a bench. I don't know if you guys can actually tell on the video, but I'll try to see if I can. Scan or something. And the last two. Man with a brochure at the um, Euskalduna place. And last shot is another one of Euskalduna, some people crossing the road. Got some funky trees on the top, another tree here. That was all for today. Um, as you saw, I went out shooting, shot some 4x5 with a bite white background, developed 34 sheets today here in the darkroom. You've seen them all except for that one screw up, which you've seen, but there was nothing to see. And that's how I developed my film in my darkroom. It takes like a few hours, like 30 minutes per tank, which is nice. And then I hang them here, try to dry them before the next batch hook them up and put them on the light table to check them out, which look, I'll show you how it looks. You can see a group shot of some friends, group shot, my aunt with my daughter, a chayalai, some arches, this is the one I thought was not exposed, but it is, it has like a heart with chalk. This is a handheld 4x5, that's just the window and look at the deal with some dry plants and stuff, just some details. I kind of like sometimes trying to take a shot with a lot of contrast. Um, here you have the Hayalai again. This is another shot of Madrid with a 72 wide angle. And then my kid, the oldest kid that I screwed up the exposure, but I'm still gonna try to print these. These are like three stops overexposed, just so you can see what film can retain. That's it for today. Um, thanks for watching. I'm sorry this video is going to be a bit of a vlog style Instagram live kind of story. I'll put it on the Instagram as I did it until I ran out of battery on my phone. And um, hope you enjoyed it. Saw what I do in the darkroom. And um, maybe next time I can print some shots. But I still have a long backlog of um, 
tries to develop. So yeah, see you in the next video.